welcome to my channel. My name is Catherine and I am a Iron Age Reconstruction Druid. If you want to know more about that, I have a video. So uh, we are still in lockdown here in Wales. I'm still waiting for my vaccine. I am in an at-risk group, but because of my age, I'm not super high up the list. So hopefully I'll be getting that soon. So uh, it's just been a bit difficult for me being trapped inside all the time. My, not my health itself, but my fitness has really had a decline, which is uh, tied to my heart condition so uh, it's been pretty tough for me and most of the time I've just been playing lots of video games or reading uh, but I really wanted to try and get back into the flow of making content because I really enjoy it and I really love interacting with everyone and today I wanted to address something that I get in the comments a lot and uh, I just thought it'd be best to make a video about it as the easiest way of um, getting the information across succinctly because I feel like just uh, first of all I've, I've asked it quite a lot uh, so I, I'm essentially like copy and pasting the same reply because my reply is always the same but I want to give you more information so that question is uh, what are any book recommendations that I have for people wanting to know more about Druidry and like my brand of Druidry so I will be talking about five books that I think are really really helpful None of them are actually about how to practice Druidry and there is a strong reason for that. If you want to know about books that can help you with that, please wait until the end because I will have some more information. Uh, but basically, the main reason that I can't recommend these sorts of books is because I don't read them. Because I use my own knowledge that I gained from doing my master's degree, from looking at so many sources that unfortunately are not available to the public or like are really expensive if you want to get hold of yourself. Um, and uh, I don't feel like I could recommend the sources, those sources that I used either because they're so inaccessible. So I wanted to give you book recommendations that are really good, that are worth the money, that are easily available and that are written by experts. That's the main thing. I see a lot of stuff. There's lots of people writing books on aspects of druidry, goddesses, and stuff like that. But the research is really bad. Like it's just you can't trust it. It's not based on archaeological research, it's not based on textual research. It's just stuff that's been passed down and passed down and if you want to just learn about how to do a particular sort of craft or something these those sort of books can be useful my friend got me one actually about the bard's taliesin uh but it, it the level of research just wasn't there and i kept i was trying to read it but it kept making these uh these claims that i was like that's not true though like where have you got that information from and it's it's difficult because it can be very difficult to know that before you go in if you don't have that academic background and also an academic background in this field because like I have an academic background in Christian theology before this anyway <laughs> but anyway let's get on with the books so I've got five different books two of them are on the historical side like the archaeological side and three of them are uh, mythology texts so they are not um like they're not tales from the Iron Age, some of the tales might have existed or probably did exist in the Iron Age and were passed down and passed down and written down, but also they're not written down oral tradition, that's all they are. The people who wrote them down adapted them at the time and chose which parts to leave in, which parts to get rid of from different versions, so they are like they're not just written down myth. Anyway. So let's go with, uh, the first one I'm going to recommend is a bit more niche. So I'm going to start off with the two books that are the, like, the historical side. And the first one I have is uh, Celtic Wales by Miranda Aldersgreen and Ray Howell. Um, I actually don't really know much about Ray Howell, but he's retired professor of Welsh antiquity at the University of Wales. So like you know his credentials are way up there um i've studied several of Aldous green's books i also have her book on boudicca boudicca britannia which uh some parts are really useful some parts are uh, a little bit mad there's one part where she starts trying to claim that uh carter mandua was a horse shaman and i just like i where have you got that from i don't know uh i think she also has got a book on the druids so maybe if if you're interested in knowing about that let me know and uh, I'll give it a read if, if there's enough interest. Uh, but this is really useful. Uh, you can see that I have like 
highlight back on me this is before i did my master's degree um i bought this from a little shop in fishguard in pembrokeshire uh, before i lived in wales actually yeah so this it's a really good foundation text it's very easy to read it's very accessible it's not really complex uh academic jargon which i hate um i really dislike it if you know your stuff you can write it in an accessible manner if you write it in a way that is really difficult to read then it just proves to me that you're not a good writer to be honest um so it's really easy to read uh, there's loads of really good information it's not super super in depth it's more like a little introductory text but if you're interested about Wales in particular I really recommend it um it has stuff from like I think the Neolithic through to early medieval so uh, not just the Iron Age but uh, really useful stuff stuff about the Druids um so these are the, I'll give you the main chapter titles. Celtic Wales in its European context, really important as well. It also looks at like wider Europe, um, a little bit, not too much, but a little bit, so it's really good for that. Uh, the first, Welsh Celts, Iron Age Wales. Uh, Celts of the Romans, boo. The first Christians in Wales, the early medieval period and Celtic myths of Wales. Yes, yeah, so Miranda Owls of Screen has done a lot of stuff on myth. So uh, I think this is, handle is oh it's part yeah it's a bronze handle from the late iron age of the snowden ball so that's cool look at it it's so beautiful so that's the first book celtic wells by randa alder screen and ray howell i'll give this to bork first to guard okay so the second one which is a broader one um it's more about uh, like it's not just focused on wales it's the wider context and that is The Celts, A Very Short Introduction by Barry Cunliffe. Barry Cunliffe is like, uh, he's a big, big academic in the Iron Age. Um, I read his articles all the time. I read, Frank, you know, when you do something like a master's, usually you don't sit down and like read a whole book by someone because, um, uh, because like you've got so much to get through. So you pick relevant bits, but he's really good, really accessible really super knowledgeable uh these little guides are really good i've got a couple of them on like different topics but uh he basically looks at he looks at where who are the celts where did they come from um the origins of it he looks at um the archaeology he is an archaeologist uh he looks a little bit of like everyday life he knows so much that he can give you the base information in a really really good way so you're not going to get yeah you're not going to have like tons and tons and tons of stuff with this but this is such a good starting point and if you're looking to like really get started and look at academic sources he also has a really good list um yeah so he's got see i might i might look at some of these um, as well some of his recommendations that's the thing as well is knowing where to look so he's got really good references it's not tons of stuff but if you read this and you want to know more about it or just like if you read a section of this and want to know more about a certain thing you can look up his recommendations and go from there and you will find so much stuff so um it's really really good Barry Cuddle if you can't go wrong what a guy <laughs> okay so now it's my favorite part to the mythology so I'm going to start with mm, three mythological texts i'm gonna go from it's mean to say the most boring but like i'd say probably the the one that's a bit more inaccessible first and it is uh tales of the elders of ireland a new translation by anne dooley and harry rowe which is part of oxford world's classics that's very nice it's what is the cover it's a detail from folio 200 recto of the book of kells oh the book of kells is so good um and in Irish, um, I'm going to try and say it right. I'm not very good with Irish pronunciation. Uh, I can say some things here in a little bit. I can say some things. Um, a clavan na sanarach, I think. That's how I pronounce it. So um, this is basically a text from the... You know, it's probably easiest for me to just read the blurb of it. Uh, so three parallel worlds interact in the tales. The contemporary Christian world of St. Patrick with his scribes, clerics, occasional angels and souls rescued from hell, the earlier pagan world of the ancient giant Fenians and an array of Irish kings, and the timeless other world peopled by ever young shape-shifting fairies. The tales dwell in detail on the inhabitants of the Irish other world and provide an extensive account of their music and magic, their internecine wars, and their malice toward an 
that and their balance toward an infatuation with humankind, themes that still feature in the storytelling of present day Ireland. So uh, it's a new translation as well, which is means it w which means it will be more accessible. It's you can see it's not very long, but it's quite dense, um, like with a lot of myth and like translations of older, older work. It, it, so you know you won't breeze through it in a day. But there's some really good stuff in here. Um, lots of tales of Finn McCool. Um, it's basically sort of the premises of it is that uh, Saint Patrick is sort of wandering around Ireland and he comes across. I think it's either Thin McCool or it's um, someone who like a war it's a warrior band, like a travelling warrior band, who served under Thin McCool and um, they're telling him these stories and like these old stories of Ireland. So it's a really, really interesting text. Um, it's not like I'll move on to some like the more famous Irish tales, but there's some really good stuff here. Some really tragic things, like some things that really still stick with me. I haven't read it in like oh god three four years um but it's uh it's got like one tale about a woman who falls in love with the wrong man they can't be together all that sort of stuff and remember she's like uh she's trapped on this rock at the sea uh, in the sea and like the sea just keeps coming and it eventually drowns her i mean all celtic myth is just like it's super sad <laughs> there's like very rarely a happy ending um so yeah tales of the elders of ireland really good the second text of irish myth which oh i love this one this is the toyne for the irish epic toyne mccolmia see i can say some stuff in irish um translated by thomas kinsella there is a more recent translation uh i will put in who it's by because i can't remember off the top of my head which i haven't read i've heard it's really good but kinsella's translation is oh it's really great it really captures like people say like the earthiness of the toy but uh it's like the crudeness like he really captures like how gross it is at times so the story of the toy Pecunia, it means uh the casual raid of coolie well called yeah. um and it's about uh queen Maeve, who is this very important uh irish queen who's talking with her husband and uh basically they get into this argument in bed one night about who owns the most like wealth the most property and they're sort of arguing to and fro and uh they're, they're equally matched in all things apart from uh she had this prized bull who's wandered off into Culmia, into Cooley. um and so she is the she's the queen of Connaught, which is like a, um an area of ireland that's uh west of Kulnia, of Cooley, I think, um, and she has to go into Ulster. She, they basically lead this big war band into Ulster to get this prize bull back. But um, the the Ulstermen can't fight because they've been uh, struck by this uh, magical ailment uh, from one of the gods, so that they're not allowed. Uh, I think it's by Emma because they make her run when she's pregnant, and so they're punishment is that um they'll have to suffer pregnancy pangs or like the pain of pregnancy at um certain intervals and so they're all suffering from this so uh the hero Cahullan, which is means the uh the hound of cullen who is also sort of known as the hound of ulster uh, has to fight in their stead so he's one person against al who's Maeve's husband, Maeve, and uh, Fergus McRoig is there. It's a huge, big, messy battle tale. It's so much fun. And there's also some stuff before it um, as well. There's stuff about uh, Kolkhova, Kolkhova, who is the um, the king of Ulster. So there's stuff about him, and it's about like how the Ulster would get there, these birth pangs and stuff like that, the latest stop in fighting, stuff about Cahullan. Um, and there's also a bit about oh, it's also got these really beautiful maps in it, so that's really cool. Uh it's got stuff about pronunciation, which is helpful. Okay, so basically there's um and there's illustrations as well, little illustrations in this book. So this copy is really nice. Um, they're quite like abstract, but yeah, they're very nice. Uh, Portrait of Emma. Oh no, it's not. It's not Emma then who causes the birth pangs. 
But yeah, Cullen is just like this huge Iron Age fuckboy. And it's, well, no, he's not, well, it's sort of set in a mythical Iron Age. Um, interestingly, we don't have, like, chariots are featured quite heavily in the tale, but there are no, there's no archaeological evidence of chariots, of Iron Age chariots that has been found um, in Ireland. So that's really interesting. Who am I thinking? I think of Deirdre, or Deirdre is how it's spelt in, uh, in this tale, but that's a really important uh, tale as well about Deirdre and how she falls in love with Noisha. She's meant to, uh, she's meant to marry Kolkhova, who sort of like grooms her before she's even born. It's really creepy, but yeah, that's a really good tale and really really sad at the end. So I studied De uh, Deirdre a little bit. Finally, we get on to the big boy, my main love. All my stuff, like all my the the oh, the gods I, I sort of talk about are mentioned elsewhere in some other tales but mainly you can read all about them in the Mabinogian this to uh, this new translation by Charlotte Davis uh I say it is new translation it came out in 2007 so 14 years ago but it's a still pretty new translation um I actually went to the same university that uh, Charlotte Davis teaches at um, I wasn't taught by her because she actually teaches in the Welsh department and I was in the like the history archaeology department but um, I worked my supervisor was like quite a close colleague of her um, and it's just such a good translation you've got uh, the main four branches of the Babylonian um, but you've also got several other tales as well uh, so you've got Peridur son of Evrog the dream of the Emperor Maxon Cleave and Clebellus, the Lady of the Well, Geraint, son of Erwin, How Kiluch won Olwen, and Fronabwy's Dream. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here. Also, the notes are really, really good. Um, oh, that's for the other two translations as well. The notes are really great, and they have extra stuff if you want to read more about it. You know, there's recommendations for articles you can read and books you can read. Uh, I'm not sure how accessible some of that stuff is, which is why I recommend that you start off with these, uh, because these I know you can easily get a hold of. Um, you can also, the I will try and find some information about uh, tales you can find online, because some of them, that's the only way I've been able to read them, is through, um, like, uh, online translation. So I will put a link down below, because I know that there is uh, one academic uh, particular website she... Uh, Post, she's got like a load of translations and loads of resources but like they can be a bit difficult it can be a bit difficult to navigate um so this is just it's so good it's so easy to read it's so fun uh if you want to know just more about some of the characters to talk about where i get that information from it's pretty much all from here and if it's from somewhere else i do signpost it um but yeah that's how you can get started uh Obviously, like I say, that stuff doesn't tell you how to do rituals, it doesn't tell you, whilst the, these are like the sources for the gods that I use, uh, because they are written as like medieval characters, they're not presented necessarily as gods, um, so it can be difficult to know how do you, like, what would this person be a god of? Is this person a god? Because not everyone mentioned in the mythology is a god either. It's a very important like thing to say. Um, and one of the ways that I am trying to uh, help people who uh, want to know more about what I particularly do is I have a beginner's guide to Druidry available on my Etsy and it's only four pounds, I think. Obviously you can buy it anywhere in the world. It's PDF. So you will immediately get it and you can download it. Uh, it's not super long but it will give you a very easy guide to like doing some simple rituals and like some simple prayers that you could give to the gods but i am also working on a bigger book that um i say it's a book it's not gonna be like near this size but like a more thorough guide and it will be like a complete list of like all the gods that i worship where i get my information from how you can worship them what you can give an offering all that sort of stuff so it will be like a set central thing to work from and that's good for me as well because i have to gather all this information myself i have to formulate it myself and so it's really useful to actually have this end like not product but like a uh, central pillar really that i can do everything else around so i'm still working on that 
been working on it for a while, the pandemic hasn't helped, uh, but I hope that uh, this has been information, informational, informative for you. Um, I hope that you gain a lot from it, I hope that you can pick up some of these books um, and enjoy reading them as much as I enjoyed reading them. They're a really great place to start, as I say they're not an end point and uh, whilst there might be some good sort of like guides of people who are like identify as druids, I can't recommend them because I haven't read them because I'm doing my own thing. Um, but let me know what you think in the description in the description, in the comments. Oh, my brain's melted. So let me know in the comments what you think about these, if you've read any of them, um, uh, which ones would you like to read, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Give me your thoughts. And um, I also have a link to my Etsy where you can get the guide I mentioned, but you can also get uh, tarot readings. I'm also going to be putting up the, some prayer bracelets very, very soon. I need to I need to like take some photos and actually put them up because then I can make a video talking to you about them because I don't want to do a video talking to you about them and they're not ready yet. I have got plenty ready but I just need to like get them up on my store, do all that stuff. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Do you think this is a good video? No? Why? Not much attention was made to you. For you? Not paid to you. This is for first. Excuse me. Hopefully I'll be able to get one real one soon. I know you're a real dog. When she, when she was able to visit, when like the restrictions weren't as bad, she visited, visited us.